G'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, it's been quite some time since I've uh, put up a video. Uh, been quite busy doing a whole lot of other things, um, and of course, COVID has been a bit of a dampener. But anyway, summer's about to start here in New Zealand, um, and I'm quite keen to to build a rig for getting out uh, with tramping. Uh, this particular rig I want to dedicate to sort of the, the Go QRP movement here in New Zealand. Um, and I want it to, 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 to be dedicated for 369 and 0 kilohertz, which is a frequency which we're sort of trying to encourage uh, here in New Zealand as a, um, as a QRP uh, central focus point. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, my thinking is for this particular radio, and again, this is just, this is just, just for me, it's not going to be for everybody, it's, it's single frequency, single band, but you know, this is what I enjoy, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm thinking. Uh, like I say, 369 and 0 would be the uh, the starting point. Uh, there will be the ability to tune up and down 10 hertz at a time, uh, and I'll go into the, what these mean later on. Uh, in terms of fine tuning uh, to pick up you know, on on receive, uh, and then also on the ability through a mode switch to uh, either switch to the North Island Mountain Radio Service frequency of 3345 kilohertz upper sideband or through another mode switch uh, transition through to the South Island MRS of 3261 kHz, also upper sideband. Uh, and the reason for that is it gives me the ability to tune into the very good uh, weather forecast that gets transmitted uh, through the day and the night, um, and also gives me the ability that if it was an emergency uh, and I couldn't raise anybody on the, the 80 meter band to tap into the, the operator's uh, on that particular service there as a, as a last resort. So that's the plan, that's going to be where I'm going to go um, and like I say I'll talk about this in a sec. Uh, from a, uh, a architecture point of view um, I'm going to stick with the um, a single conversion super heterodyne, uh, two mixes there with a the, with the single crystal filter. Uh, what I'm thinking about uh, in terms of, we'll start up here with the with the I.O. and then we'll move into the architecture here. Uh, once again using the SI5351 as the, the variable frequency oscillator and the beat frequency oscillator on receive. Um, it, it works for me, it's not for everybody, but again, um, like I say, it works for me so that's what I'm going to use. In terms of controlling that, uh, in the past I've used the, the Arduino Pro Mini with the 80 mega um, chipset there. Uh, for this one, I think I'm going to be able to get away with trying something different with the, the 80 Tiny 85 using the AVR chipset. A um, little bit smaller there. Because um, what I'm quite, quite keen to do with this radio is to get it to fit into uh, this particular box here. Uh, this was the CW rig um, and another voice one here. If I can, I'd, like I say, I'd like to get it to fit into this one. Uh, if the worst comes to worst, then, uh, then I'll, I'll, I'll settle for that. But um, I'm thinking by doing away with this display, which I'll talk about in a sec as well, um, I think I can make that quite a bit smaller. And so that's the plan, that's my ideal uh, target box. So uh, using this as the uh, the microcontroller would certainly go a long way for that. Now in terms of the, the I.O., because this is just going to be a simple um, yeah, a mode switch and up and down frequency. I'm just going to use simple little push button switches here, nice and small. Uh, the red one will be the mode switch, and then there'll be two black ones, one for up and one for down. And in terms of actually indicating th uh, visually what mode you're in, uh, I'm thinking I'm not going to use what I have used in the past, which are these little OLEDs here, or in the last couple of rigs, these little um, eight. Uh, figure of eight or seven, sorry, um, displays. I found these OLEDs a little bit noisy, which I couldn't quite get rid of the noise. Um, I was thinking about using this this smaller version here, but I suspect, and that's my understanding, is they both share the same controller. So I suspect um, I would still have the same problem with noise. So what I'm going to do, um, and I think it's going to work for me, again, this is for me, uh, is to use a NeoPixel. Um, I can tap, I can certainly make this a whole lot smaller. And what I'm thinking about is when it first powers up, it'll default to 369 or 0, that mode, and I get a green, uh, a green LED. As soon as I want to tune up and down by 10 hertz, then 
it goes away from green and, and turns orange to indicate that I'm now off frequency, so to speak. Uh, and as soon as I then hit the, the mode switch and I move around, for example, to uh, the North Island, I was thinking maybe um, going to red and maybe either blink red or just stay solid red to indicate North Island. Again, another mode switch transition takes us to the South Island MRS, where I would have, uh, again, still red to indicate that I'm on the MRS frequencies, but maybe two blinks of some sort. Either I, I stay solid and, and do one or two blinks, or it's, it's off, then two red blinks. I don't know. I'll sort that out in due course. Uh, it's only software. Um, but again, there'd be two red blinking patterns to indicate uh, that I'm not on uh, 36900 and I'm on one of the two uh, MRS frequencies. So that's what, that's what I plan to do and uh, like I say from a footprint point of view uh, it's going to be quite a bit smaller. So having said that I need to look at um, how many IO pins I've got available um, and my idea of using this little uh, 80 tiny 85 I think will work uh, and why I say that is I've got P0 through to P5 available uh, P0 is my SDA and P2 is the clock, um, so those two of there will be uh, required to, to drive the SI5351. Uh, I'll then dedicate uh, P1 for the uh, NeoPixel output, that only requires one data line for that, which then leaves three uh, digital slash analog uh, pins, so from a digital point of view I'll dedicate those to uh, one for the mode switch, and then one for the up and one for the down. So um, that there, for this limited number of I.O. pins, uh, should be suffice uh, for this particular radio. So, uh, like I said, I mentioned before, single conversion. Uh, for the two mixes there, uh, what I'm looking to use are the two ADE-1s. Uh, again, nice small form factor there. Um, I was thinking about using because I hadn't used them before, the JMS-11X uh, mixers here, uh, double balance mixers, but uh, the spec sheet says that they're good for 5 megs through to 1.3 gigs, so um, outside of my target um, specification for this particular radio of, of 3 megs, uh, so it'll have to be the ADE-1s. So what I'm going to do, ultimately they'll be the ADE-1s. Uh, I have used those in the past and I can't quite recall if I had good success or not. So what I plan to do, um, which I normally do, is I'm going to build this um, expanded out on a piece of board just to get the circuit going. And I'll start off by using uh, the tried and proven uh, SBL-1s, which from a specification point of view are the same. Uh, they're both 7 dBm uh, mixers with the same uh, frequency range. So I'll get the circuit to work nicely with the two SBL1s uh, and then I'll swap those out for the ADE-1s and um, get the circuit to work well with those two. Um, that's, that's what I, I intend to do anyway. Um, speaker, I will uh, look to use uh, earphones on that one, just gives me some privacy and I don't hassle anybody else in the hut. Uh, from a transmit point of view, um, I'm going to have uh, a little uh, electric microphone and, and what I intend to do with that one is not have that on a lead. Um, I'm going to have that um, attached to the radio itself and you actually bring the radio up to talk to it. Um, again, not ideal for everybody, but um, that's something different which I'm going to try there. It just uh, reduces the need to have uh, an I.O. Uh, port there or a 3.5mm um, a, a connector uh, and the real estate and the cabling and everything else. So that's the plan for that one. Uh, on the transmit side, I haven't drawn the transmit circuitry here. Um, again, look to use these two little small uh, double pole, double throw relays just to um, to use uh, those two IFF amps and the crystal filter uh, in the same direction for both the uh, the transmit and receive. Uh, from a form factor point of view, nice and small, so uh, that should help in trying to keep things uh, um, compact. And then the transmitter itself, probably. I think, uh, well, you know, we'll see where we go, but you know, my initial thoughts was to have another play around with the um, BD139 with a suitable driver, uh, looking to get a, you know, a couple of watts out. Um, I'm certainly not after huge amounts of power, just um, something to have a bit of a play around. And again, if that means it's, um, it, it's you know, the power is restricted in order to keep it to this size, then so be it. 
um, but it's just fun designing and building something up. So anyway, I think I've rambled on long enough. That's uh, what my, my thoughts are for this particular radio. Uh, not for everybody, but um, I think it should be quite fun and you know, just a different type of I.O. Uh, and just a different way of thinking about the radio uh, and what it can do. Anyway, I'll say 73 is there, or 73 I should say, and I'll uh, do some more thinking and we'll put another video up shortly. Okay, cheers all and stay safe.